We are in central west New South Wales, about 1100 metres above sea level. It's autumn, we've just had some rain, so I wanted to see what I could find on the property. I won't be including anything that we have grown ourselves intentionally. This will just be things that have popped up on the property on their own accord. Don't eat wild mushrooms unless you know what you're doing because you can end up in hospital either with a stomach ache or you can actually die. So it's not something you wanna just risk. But I've just gotten into it and I'm really excited to share what I've learnt so far. So, yeah. Okay, let's see what we can find. So these look like pine mushrooms. So you can see from the spongy pattern on the inside. When you forage these, you want to make sure that there are pine trees nearby. That's the only place they grow. So we're all good. So there's a bit of a debate as to whether you want to cut the mushrooms with a knife or if you want to break them off with your hands. Um, so the benefit of cutting them is that it will be a clean cut and you're not pulling too much of the mushroom out of the ground. Whereas with um, the ripping, it will actually break off where it's meant to break if you do it carefully enough. I'm interested to know what you think of that. So we have a potential field mushroom here. We've got the kind of grey, browny, white top. And I can't quite see underneath without taking it out. Hmm. So that's got white gills. I wouldn't usually, yeah, I wouldn't eat a foraged mushroom with white gills. So it's missing the skirt. False alarm. Hoo <laughs> hoo, jackpot. So we have a saffron milk cap here. Um, Lactaria deliciosa. So lactose and delicious. Oh, and that one's just ripped off on its own. You've got the orange gills, the spongy pattern on the side. And then this orange and white pattern on the top. We've got more of the um, saffron milk caps here. One, two, three, four, five. About ten. I'm going to leave these because I don't need them. I've got enough. Um, so a few ground rules for foraging. Only take what you need. Make sure you leave some. Always say thank you. And with mushrooms, I like to give them a tap so that they drop their spores. Please excuse the neighbour's dogs barking. They actually love me when I'm over there. I don't think they realise that I'm the one that lives in the paddock next door. So if you hadn't noticed, we've got a massive stinging nettle patch behind me. I'm usually not this prepared when I go foraging, but um, gloves are a good idea. I even bought some secateurs along just to give it a nice clean cut and not damage the plant. So you want to just forage the younger leaves. Yeah, you don't want to consume the older leaves because they've got um, cystolus, which can really be bad for your kidneys. Um, and the stem is really fibrous, so it's not that good for eating. Here's a closer look at the leaves, but yeah, the main way to identify them is by touching it. Nettle is really high in protein, calcium, iron. It's just the ultimate plant-based companion. Um, it's called self-flagulation by doing this, and that's um, a good way of offering pain relief if you suffer from joint pain or arthritis. One of the properties I was on, I was told a story about how these boys in the middle of winter would take off their shirts and hit each other with these because it just warms up the body so well. And I find that if you're anticipating the 
feel, it's just a little tingle, but when you stumble upon it by accident, it really stings. So once you cook the leaves, the stinging goes away. You can either cook them and make a meal out of them, like nettle gnocchi, um, pesto. There's a bunch of dishes um, that are in that weed foraging book. Also nettle tea is really nice. This plant has so many uses. You can use it to dye clothes because of the rich green colour. Um, it's a blood tonic, and anti-dandruff shampoo. So many uses. Yeah. And look how much we have. It's also a member of the cannabis family. So for all my stoner friends out there, if you're in a legal place to grow this, it's said that you can rip out the nettle and replace it with a cannabis plant and that's the perfect place for it to grow. We've got some more pine mushrooms here. Another here. It's a bit old though. I'll leave that for the earth. Um, they're a bit small and there's a few holes in that one. I'm happy with what I've got so I'll leave them. I'm going to call it a day because I'm satisfied with these findings for some revision. That's a saffron milk cap. This is the pine mushroom. A lot of mushrooms will have a skirt around this region. Neither of these varieties do. Oi, <coughs> Lulu. So apparently, if you put mushrooms in the sun after you've cut them up, they can absorb vitamin D that you can then absorb from them. Mm.